Okay, so ever since both the, the novel and the movie Jurassic Park, people have been interested in the idea of cloning dinosaurs. However, there are colossal problems. And often people talk about DNA as being the blueprint for building an animal, be it a sauropod dinosaur like this, myself, these plants behind me. But actually, in many situations, a better analogy is actually a recipe. And various people, including Richard Dawkins, most eloquently, have stressed that recipes are often a better way of thinking about it. And if you think about recipe, it's actually quite useful in understanding why it is deeply unlikely that we're ever going to be able to clone a dinosaur. Because there's two aspects to actually making a meal. There's the recipe itself, and that's the colossal problem, come to that in a minute, but there's also the kitchen. And people often say, well, if you're going to close down, so we can make some use of modern birds, get the DNA into bird eggshells and things. Clearly, birds are the closest related thing we've got to dinosaurs. But dinosaurs and birds diverged a very, very long time ago. So the last time that they effectively shared a kitchen of exactly the same d design is well over 100 million years ago. And clearly, that itself could be a problem. You know, pursue the cooking analogy. Imagine taking a recipe, a high-tech Heston Blumenthal sort of recipe, and trying to cook it in a kitchen in a fort on Hadrian's Wall about 2,000 years ago. However good that recipe is, with that kitchen, you've got serious problems. So the actual kitchen, if you like, is potentially a big problem. An even bigger problem, though, is the recipe itself. To actually clone something, you need most of the DNA. Um, you may be able to fill in the odd little gap, and indeed Michael Crichton suggested in his novel that that was sort of done, but you're going to need much of the information. Currently, the oldest fossil genome we have, the oldest full recipe that we have for any animal, actually comes from an Ice Age horse that died less than a million years ago in very peculiar circumstances in the Arctic so that it's actually been frozen ever since it died. So the oldest recipe we yet currently have is about 700,000 years old. Dinosaurs, the very last of them, go extinct ballpark about 65 million years ago. So there's a colossal gap between the oldest we've actually got and dinosaurs. At the time Crichton wrote his novel on Jurassic Park, this was early in the science of actually trying to get fossil DNA out of samples, and people thought they were getting things from this, the time of dinosaurs, and that's one of the things that actually inspired Crichton's novel. Actually, as we got better at this sort of thing, a lot of these early um, potential dinosaur DNAs all started to look a bit dodgy and misunderstandings of sort of state-of-the-art technology and things. Even if they were true, they were not full recipes, they were just little bits, so it makes it more the case of having a recipe where all that survives are just a few words. So having the word, say, cook, and potato tells you something. It tells you it's not a salad because you've got to cook it, and it tells you that potato is one of the ingredients. But you're never going to be able to reconstruct exactly a whole meal out of just the word cook and potato. You're going to need much more of the recipe than that. And most people are deeply, deeply skeptical that we're ever going to find enough information in old DNA, even if we get any of, uh, words from a dinosaur, to actually have that sort of recipe where we may even stand just an outside chance of being able to clone the thing.